So when many people come down to the Amazon jungle to try out ayahuasca and these various other places, they never take into consideration dieta because they think that ayahuasca is all that there is. But there's actually various other plants, such as tobacco and toe, that shamans use to get a wide variety of knowledge from these teacher plants. Uh, I have Craig here who's going to go through a few plants and the importance of dieta. So, what is the importance of dieta? So basically the, <coughs> the dieta, as known here in the South American um, shamanistic cultures working with plants, is a, is, a, is a time, an undertaking, you go building a relationship with a, with a plant or a tree in order to either learn from them, learn their teachings, uh, how to use them as a medicine, all the way down to just, just basic healing. Um, a lot of the time in Shipibo culture, in their tradition, uh, with, a, with a lot of illnesses, you know, down here we're working with the shamanic tradition where things, are phys physical manifestations are illnesses, um, ailments, stuff like that, come from an unbalance of spiritual, you know, spiritual energy is not right. We might have spirits attached to us, uh, or, or mentally, you know, we're we're not in the right headspace, and then in turn they manifest themselves as a physical illness, ailment. Um, that all can be healed with plants. Uh, this this goes all the way to cancer, HIV, AIDS. They're all curable with the plants, um, undertaking a period of dieta. Traditionally, you know, a shaman would, if you had a, had a problem that you couldn't, couldn't fix yourself with plants here, as the Amazon being the, the pharmacy of the world in modern day, back then it was always their pharmacy. They never, never had to go to the doctors as such. They'd go see the shaman or within culture, they, they just knew they, they had Within their people, they knew what plants fixed what. Uh, say a headache, you could do a floral bath with a certain plant to remove that uh, swelling. You know, a lot of it was common knowledge within the people. For the harder to deal with illnesses, ailments, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's where someone would would go and meet with the shaman. The shaman would normally. Uh, invite invite them to do an ayahuasca ceremony with them and that's and that would be yeah in tradition it was only the shamans that drank the ayahuasca and the patient would come in to the shamans probably maloka or their house uh, the village maloka wherever it was and sit in front sit in front of the the shaman and the shaman would sing ayahuasca and diagnose them during the during a, a ceremony and sing to be to initiate the healing, but a lot of the time, you know, following following that ceremony, the shaman would come out with a good idea of what needed to be done to to cure this disease. And most of the time, it was through plant dieta, and that plant, tree, substance, whatever it is, would have come to the shaman, and then the the length and duration of a dieta would would then be passed on to. To the patient, uh, like like a modern day prescription. Yeah. So, ayahuasca ceremonies help diagnose the patients. Yeah, yeah. So the ayahuasca was used to open up, so the the shaman could get the vision and see the see the problem, see the ailment. Might might just be an imbalance of energies that you know bringing a plant dieta in will help to center all the energies, uh, connect with with uh, the good energies. And you know, therefore, in turn, the physical manifestation of this, after time, under di diet, will will disappear. Mm. So that's the way. That's one way of many, but primarily, you know, of using diet to heal things. Uh, also, with diet, <coughs> there's there's a a time undertaken. You know, to to learn, and that comes back to 
what all of these medicine plants are about. They're all about teaching and and finding finding our own truths, uh, knowing ourselves better, knowing exactly who we are at our core. Time under diet really really helps us get closer to who we really are. Um, typically done in isolation, similar to a vipassana, um, where it's you, your own energy, your own thoughts, and plant and God. Um, through this this time, um, dieta a dieta is opened by by a shaman or the or the, the maestro, whoever you're working with. They'll normally open that under an ayahuasca ceremony through Ikaro um, to announce, make the announcement that you know this person is undertaking dieta and and to call the spirits of that plant, whatever they're dieting, the spirits of and the medicine of that plant to attach to this person and and to work with them during that that time. Um, so, following following the opening of a of a dieta. There's food restrictions uh, and a lot of restrictions that come into modern day life, you know. Um, but, you know no salt, no sugar, no flavors, no sex, no um, touching of people, no interaction, preferably with anybody. So once you get diagnosed uh, and given sort of a plant that you need to use to heal, uh, what sort of process do you undergo then to actually connect with the plant? So through it, the the diet's opened with the shaman, yeah. and traditionally, uh, and you'll find, you know, the common common way traditionally is you may drink ayahuasca the first time you open a diet, rather the, the the first day of the diet when you drink, um, and then maybe right not drink ayahuasca all the way through till the end. At you know, it may be. Three weeks, it might be a month, it might be three months, it could be a year, two years. Um, so traditionally, you wouldn't be drinking ayahuasca a lot. Uh, you'll be connecting with with your plant or tree through dreams, and you know, by being alone in isolation, where you can, as I was saying, it's when it's you, the plant, and and God, you know, like gives you a chance to really find yourself within that, connect with a plant, interpret the messages coming through, and that's where a lot of the learning is. Uh, could you give me an example of like just a couple of different plants and sort of the way them plants can connect with you and the benefits of them specific plants? So something like tobacco mm -hmm. is a super strong medicinal plant that we've probably begun to use we, we have been using it wrong in the west um, to the point where it's no longer a medicine it's that fine line that's it's flipped and turned to a poison mm -hmm. so you know we have this bad stigma around smoking tobacco when actually it is one of the most powerful plants down here and most commonly you the most used plant throughout all of America, medicinally. Um, so <clears throat> it's a very strong sort of masculine spirit that you know can be used for a lot of a lot of cases. Um, really, really good for cleaning out of parasites, especially under skin parasites. There's a lot of different ways you can prepare, prepare the tobacco. But it really, in my experience with tobacco, really sets a really good sense of who you are. Helps you strengthen your connection to yourself, to others, how to set boundaries. Um, really, just strengthening that connection between ourselves that we, in modern day, have lost. Um, uh, that's. That's a, a quick snapshot at tobacco, you know, like it, they say it is, it is the vehicle, it's the vehicle for spirits to connect to us, to connect to others, um, so tobacco is used. 
so almost exclusive, yeah, ex extensively with ayahuasca. So anybody looking to work with ayahuasca deep and profoundly should also look into the use of tobacco mm. as well in a ceremonially way. Yeah, so when you want to work with tobacco, the first sort of process is you'll smoke, um, drink ayahuasca, you'll be diagnosed, you'll be given the tobacco plant, mm -hmm. and then the following step after that is you actually, you don't smoke the tobacco to connect with it, do you? No. You, you drink it, right? Yeah, so a lot of the time with, with a diet, depending on the length of it, you may drink for three, four, maybe five times in a row, consecutive nights, a small preparation of it. You know, it'll be tobacco steeped in water, mm -hmm. um, and a small amount of that drunk, just to, to make that connection within your body, having some of, physically having some of tobacco in a liquid medicine form in your body, but you know, the main intention of diet is to connect to the spirit of tobacco. Yeah. And that is what happens during the time of dieta. Mm. Yeah, so during your dieta, the way it connects with you then is through dream time, through uh, just messages throughout the day in uh -huh. isolation. Yeah. Um, and if you do drink ayahuasca, which is maybe once a month, once every two weeks? Yeah. Uh, Everything's everything's dependent, you know. Yeah. Everywhere, everywhere you work with, every shaman is different. Yeah. Their length of time, the how intense uh, you will be working with ayahuasca. Mm. Um, could be up to four times a week, yeah. drinking ayahuasca, and the and during those times you will be connecting with tobacco a lot. Yeah. So as well as like mother ayahuasca during ceremonies, you then get tobacco as well. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another common plant I've heard is toe. Mm -hmm. So what are the sort of benefits of toe and diet? So toe really helps connect to dreams and to the whole opening visions, connecting with spirits um, and possibly you know looking into the future, yeah. the, the clairvoyancy, very powerful for that. Have to very have to have to err on the caution working with a plant like toe. It would not would not be a first diet um, yeah. in most cases. Um, you you have to really know yourself and what you want to be using it for if you're going to use that as a plant to diet yeah. and learn from. But it does contain a lot of power. Uh, power for shamans. Most shamans will diet toe. Uh, doing an extensive diet with toe is almost, in Shipibo culture, one of the requirements to, to being classed as a as a shaman, as opposed to an ayahuasquero. You know, moving up, moving up the steps into a curandero. You know, a lot of that, and of course, every area is different. Every culture is different within the Shipibo and their subculture. But you know, a lot of the time, they say a six-month diet of toe moves you up into the class of being a shaman. Shamans typically, so for medicinal purposes, depending on whatever the illness is you need to work through, you might just do a, a two to like a four week diet or something. Yeah. But shamans diet for like extensive periods of time, Ex don't they? Yeah. Especially at the start of their training. You know, throughout the start of their training, they will, uh, most shaman will at least undertake one large diet, uh, be it six months, a year. Yeah. And then other small diets throughout their lives, uh, carrying on and uh, you know complementing it and learning the medicine of, of a range of other plants. Uh, a lot of shaman down here in Peru, you'll find they have one at least one very long extensive diet.